What's going on guys, I'm in Advantage and welcome back to another NHL 24 video. Every year we get changes to NHL, however this year there's more changes than ever. In this video, I'll be going over the 5 things that you need to do first before you play any games. Now whether you're playing Hockey Ultimate Team or any other game mode in NHL 24, one of the first things you'll want to do is come in here into your settings. The first one we'll be looking at is your audio and visual settings. Now the most important one here is going to be your camera. I prefer to use overhead. I in fact made an entire visual settings video. It was last minute NHL 22, but really not that much has changed when it comes to the camera views. The main key is making sure that you're able to see everything that happens out there on the ice. The last thing you want is your camera view to restrict what you can see. And obviously the more you can see before your opponent, that will always give you an advantage. The next thing that I always look at using is prefer up when it comes to my camera perspective. And also there's a few new things this year, like the skater fatigue indicator. I actually think that's a great quality of life issue. So you could see how well rested or how zapped your players are when they're out there and you can get a line change. So a lot of these I do like to keep on. You could play around with these. A lot of this is really simply going to be preference. The other one I want to point out here, though, is the shootout camera. I prefer to use overhead for everything that I do, so I'm staying consistent. However, if you want to change this to something that's maybe a little bit more zoomed in, you can get away with it here, but just know that you have the option to change it if you want. The audio settings part is probably the most subjective portion of this entire video. Obviously, if you like to listen to the audio and the music, the commentary, that's all preference. I personally like to turn it off. And I also like to lower some of these down to about a 7 out of 10. Some of them a 5 out of 10 with the new music this year too. But there are some changes that you can make. And again, this is something you can adjust as time goes on. Whether it's an all or nothing or maybe it's just a little bit quieter. It's really up to your preference. One of the things I do like that they did do about commentary this year is that they changed it where you can either have the full commentary via pay by play or you can really just have them commentate the goals only. I may give this a shot and see how I like it. If you've seen anything about NHL this year, if you've just loaded up the game and are wondering what in the heck the total control situation is, well, let's talk about controller settings. This is probably the largest change that we've gotten in an NHL franchise since really the skill stick came out itself. I personally have used the skill stick in the past. That is the one that is going to allow you to do really just about anything. However, I've been also playing around with the new total control system, whether it comes to hitting or whether it's hitting things like the Michigan, the total control system allows you to actually be able to do a lot of these things at the press of a button. Whereas the skill stick is going to be a little bit more complicated to accomplish some of the same moves. If I'm you, here's what I would do. I would try the total control for about 10 to 15 games. If you're like me, I kept reverse hitting and I'd be hitting the wrong button sometimes. That is going to happen. I personally believe the total control is going to give you a slight advantage for a few different reasons. First, the hitting is way easier by just pressing either B for a shoulder check or X for a hip check. I like that so much better than just having to use the hit system. It's a little bit more challenging this year using just the skill stick. Next, I believe it's a lot more fun to actually hit some of these deeks, especially the Michigan. It's extremely easy this year unless something changes right now. I think you have an advantage if you do use the total control. And regardless of what layout you're using, I recommend turning off auto backscape. It's going to be more of a nuisance than it is going to help you. I recommend you turn this off. Again, if you feel like you need it, you can always turn it back on. But in my opinion, it hinders you more than it helps. Now, when it comes to the on ice trainer, if you're new to the game, you can do whatever you like to do here. I'd recommend keeping some of these on if you're brand new. But if you're like me, been playing for a while, so this just gets a bit annoying. I turn just about everything off except for the offsides warning. And unless you get annoyed by it, I actually think it's great that they added in the objectives pop up in game. However, you can also turn that off. It's up to you. All right, boys. Now let's talk about hockey ultimate team and building your lines. Now this can detain to multiple different modes across NHL 24. However, it's most prevalent in hut. Tim Stutzla, for example, is an 82 overall on the faceoffs. Whereas Marion Hosa, a winger, is a 70 overall on faceoffs. So the key is to make sure that your players are in the best position to succeed. I also have Pedersen on the wing. He's fast. I like his shot. I'll talk a little bit more about specifics when it comes to team building. However, in this video, I simply want to cover the basics of your lines. So let's talk about the power play, for example. I want to have my first line out here, and I want it to match exactly with my first line forward group. Also with my first line D pairing. There's a few reasons why I want that to be the case. 
The most important is stamina and energy. You wanna make sure if you're mixing and matching the lines that you're not gonna throw another player out there that's burnt once that power play is over. For me, again, it's a quality of life thing, but a lot of times this gets unnoticed more or less by new players. And quite frankly, sometimes I get lazy and I don't update it all the time whenever I'm adding a new player to my squad, especially early on in hockey ultimate team. You want to make sure that you're consistently updating this if you're playing competitively. And last but not least, if you have a coach, make sure you also throw them into your lineup. The next phase of team building is looking at your ability points and synergies in your hockey ultimate team. At the most basic level, you want to ensure that the frontline players, meaning your first line, your second line, and also your first line defensive pairing, have their abilities turned on. The reason for that is the players that are seeing the most ice time, you want to make sure that they're using those abilities to their utmost advantage. Synergies in NHL have been here for a while. There were a few tweaks that I'll go over in a later video. But again, at the most basic level, as you're building out your team, you want to make sure that you have enough players in the lineup to activate some of those key synergies. Early on for me, I like to play a two-way game. So I have my two-way forwards and my two-way defensemen activated. And as you can see here on Brian Rust, he has those ability point increases. Last but not least, boys, let's talk strategies. Okay, here's the deal. I haven't played enough hut and I haven't played enough NHL 24 yet to tell you what good strategies are in this game versus what they're not. What I can tell you is the best way to find that out is to test different things. As time goes on, I will certainly make more videos and let you guys know what I think is the most advantageous, but this also depends on your play style. Keep in mind, you can update whether it be your team strategies, whether it be player strategies, or whether it also be on the power play. One of the other unique things that they brought to the table this year is that you can actually change where certain people are placed in the power play from even the faceoffs. When it comes to strategies, here's what I'd recommend. Make sure that you play at least 10 to 15 games at a minimum with the same strategies in place. That way you'll be able to tell whether or not these actually fit your play style and you can adjust accordingly. That's it for me on this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We're less than 40 subscribers away from 7,000. Thank you so much for all your support. And if you'd love to see more NHL 24 content, make sure you go ahead and click subscribe. Again, I'm in advantage, and I will see you guys next time.